So, a little bit to the left, in that, in that little gap. To the right, there we go. They are slowly moving towards us. I don't know which pack it is yet. It looks like one of the bigger packs. It looks like they've eaten already this morning. So hopefully they just meander across and have a snooze on Juma side and then we'll be with them hunting on the sunset safari. Now, there we go, patience and a bit of up and downing on the boundary. We've got a view of them. Hello puppies. Look at those wonderful big radar dish ears. Come guys. Come on. As I said, it looks like they've eaten already this morning. You can see their bellies are quite fat. So they might have a snooze. And I'm hoping they snooze on our side. Oh, no! <laughs> no. <laughs> I think they're going to snooze right there. Yep. At least they're snoozing where we can get a view of them. Yes, keep moving. Good puppy. Now I'm trying to see a collar or any individuals that I recognize. Hello puppies. Yes, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. I just got to update the guys in the north stations. I've got a long distance visual of those Matloa opposite weaver's nest, but some of them are lying down. Some of them are still moving uh, north. Hey, Fern, make your way. No, I think they're going to rest right there. Um, but it's good, good omen for the sunset safari because they'll probably cross into a Juma. Hi, James. James is wondering if I've ever spent time at an active wild dog den. James, indeed I have. Uh, a lot of time actually um, in South Africa and Botswana and Tanzania and Zambia and it is very very exciting when you've got them because it's much easier to find them firstly and they stay in an area for an extended period of time. Stanley White. <laughs> Taxi, the Lala probably 50 meters inside uh, Little Gari. Inside Little Gari, but there's visual from Gari Main. Not great, but there is visual. Look at those ears. They're all looking to the south. Come on, elephants or something, come chase them towards us. Sorry, guys. Negative, just me and Rolf making his way. So, as I said, they're probably going to spend the majority of the day around here. There's some lovely uh, pelter forums or weeping wattles around. And in this area, that's one of the dog's favorite places to sleep. Now, they might be waiting for pack members because they all seem to be quite focused to the south. They might have lost a few pack members in the hunt. Hello, Wild Bill in Idaho. Oh, I'm just waiting for the Franklins to keep quiet. Thank you, Franklins. Uh, 
Wild Bill would like to know, are wild dogs related to domestic dogs? They are, but they're very, very distant relatives. They, they can't interbreed with domestic dogs. They split about 1.6 million years ago. Their dentition has been developed for ripping rather than chewing. And uh, also they have an extra toe that domestic dogs don't have. So they, they have been separate from domestic dogs for quite some time. Uh, although they are still fall under the dog family, which is Canis. So a wolf is is much, much closer related to a domestic dog than uh, than a wild dog. Oh, puppies. Come this way, come on. I think Hosanna and Shongile are lucky. They're probably only about 150 meters to the south, oh, to the west of east of where we are. So there was a strong possibility at one point the dogs might run through that area. So they're quite lucky the dogs have stuck a little bit further to the west of where they are. And Nina is wondering, have wild dogs ever dened at Juma? Uh, not since I've been here, Nina, and I don't know if they've ever dened at Juma. Uh, maybe some of our long-time viewers will be able to tell me, but I don't think so. If they have, it was a very long time ago. Come on, puppies. Well, the dogs are flat. They very slim possibility that they're going to get up, but we're going to wait to see if they do, uh, or to someone else arrives to keep an eye on them. Oh, something... Something spooked them. Now, hyenas will often follow dog packs to pick up the, the, the remnants. No, no, wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way. What are you doing? Don't go that way. Uh, it's greeting. Someone's arrived. Someone who was missing. And so another pack member that obviously got separated during the hunt uh, is now joined back. So that's a little bit of a greeting ceremony going on. Oh, there we go. Now come on, greet and come north. Greet and come north. So as I said, we're just hoping that they keep coming this direction. There's some greeting going on there. And you can see they've got quite fat bellies, so they've definitely killed this morning. Now, this little greeting ceremony could spur a little bit of movement towards us. Fingers crossed. No, I think they're going to go flat there again. Is there... Oh, no, there we go. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. So, generally the pack will be led in their movements by one or both members of the alpha pair. So let's hope that it's an alpha dog that has decided to start heading up the road. And it does look like we might be in luck. And they might come further to the north. Come on, keep coming. Keep coming, puppies. You can go to sleep once you've crossed the boundary. I said, so they've definitely killed this morning. There's lots of fat bellies. There we go, right next to us, Dave. Yay! Happiness is wild dogs. My favorite animal by far. You can see the blood all over the male's face there. So they've definitely, oh, he's got lots of blood. Now, I don't think this is the Investec pack. I haven't seen a collared male, and I haven't seen the alpha female yet. So this could be the Sands pack. Look at this. Hello, pups. What you doing? There we 
freak out. They're going to run around. Oh, <laughs> there you go, the Franklin. Here comes the rest of the pack. I'm trying to see, look for any individuals that I recognize, but it's been so long since I saw the Sands pack. It's so very exciting. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight so far, and there's still more coming. So there are 13 in the Sands pack, I mean in the Investec pack. I'm not sure how many in the Sands pack. Yeah, this looks like the, possibly the alpha pair here. Oh, look, just zoom in on the, the male that's closest to us, that one there. Look, he's got a very distinct, right, that's the female, Dave. <laughs> look at his, look, you can see. No, no, don't go that way. Come back. Uh, but this male who's got the blood, he's got a very distinct scar on his mouth. There we go. So I don't think, I think this isn't uh, the Investec pack. Now, what month are we in now? We're in March. So they might be mating now, or might have already mated. Because uh, they're going to den, start denning in May. And they don't have a very long lifespan, wild dogs in the wild, probably six or seven years at the most. So, as I said, I haven't seen the Sands Pack, and I think this, for a very long time, I think this is, oh, greeting ceremony going to happen. I see them running in, and you can see the puppies are still a bit smaller, they're about, they would have been born in May last year, but I'm watching this male and female here, it's almost certainly the alpha pair. Oh, and he's got a wound on his bum as well. Oh, that's quite a deep gash, but looking quite healthy. So, and as you can see, he, his hunting hasn't been affected, so I think... It might be some, oh, I love that sound. Mating's either happening or about to happen. Oh, hello puppies. Hello. Hello, David, who's in Napa. Oh, they're right next to us. They're, they're right next to us. Look at that, they're gonna run right around the front of the vehicle. The African wild dog, my favorite animal. Oh, it's so exciting. We're now surrounded by wild dogs, literally 360 degrees. The one just went straight between Rolf and us. They were right here next to us. This is incredible. Oh, I do love these puppies so much. The most endangered carnivore in South Africa. There's only about three and a half thousand left in the whole world and only about 400 in South Africa. So this is a nice big pack. Oh, this has been splendid. And guess what? They've crossed to Juma. Good dogs. They must know it's Jamie's birthday as well. So I'm sure she'll be excited to see them. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we're going to keep moving, keep following them. I just need to update the guys on the in the east that they've crossed. Stations are uh, Marshall have now crossed into Vuitella. Okay, we've got to get ready get into low range because we might be doing some bundu bashing. Tax, tax. Oh, he's having a roll. Oh, they like rolling in smelly things. Probably hyena dung. Tax, they're now heading down Weaver's Nest, uh, the whole pack. Now, I haven't been able to count them yet. Um, and it's still quite cool, so they might hunt again. Big pack. Oh, the smell of wild dogs. It smells like a wet, musty dog. Um, for me, it's the smell of excitement. Because if they come across an impala herd, uh, they will definitely be on the hunt again. So we're going to be playing hopscotch with Rolf from Cheetah Plant. I affirm best access, I'd say, is come on to Elephant Carcass. There we go. I 
Okay, they look like they might have smelt or seen something up ahead. Um, now, as I said, a big pack like this, they will definitely hunt again. Now, there, of course, are a lot of Impala, Stenbok, and Diker in this area, as well as uh, the poor scrub hare. And we always know when the dogs are on, the scrub hare population takes a serious whack. What's he got there? Is that a piece of a scrub hair? <laughs> oh, I dropped it, whatever it is. It looks smelly, whatever it is. It looks like actually a piece of bone. What have you got? It's a piece of something. Look at them, I love it when they run like single file do that down the road. They are coursing predators, wild dogs. So they are very reliant on their eyes. They basically just run into something until they bump into it and then they just chase. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try get around ahead of them, which is gonna take a bit of a driving uh, off the road. So while I do that, uh, let's go see what Madame McKay